I'm going to share with you how I put these three pieces of assemblage art together in my iPad boxes and um, how, how I laid out my composition, how I handled the little insets within the boxes and the stories that I tell with each one of them. It uh, was a really fun little series to work on and I've had these sitting aside for so long it feels good to have them finally done. So the, what held me up was doing videos and trying to get all of that organized um, and onto my YouTube channel, but whoosh, I'm done. And I like how they turned out. I'll show you close-ups at the end of the video. I hope you get a chance to, or help me take the chance to play with some assemblage art. It's really fun. It's a great artistic expression. It's also a really fun way to add uh, put together all those things that little personal mementos that you might be saving in a junk drawer or just have laying around that you can like get it all together and tell a story. So um, take a look at the video and at the end I did have time to fit in a little chunk of video on how I cut glass. Um, so got that going for you. And um, thanks. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you for being here and enjoy the video. Okay, to get this video started, let's talk about stuff. Um, I collect all kind. I used to collect a lot of stuff. Now I try to keep it pretty simple to things that I know I'm gonna use um, in my assemblage pieces. Love that little guy. Um, and, and I keep, uh, I try to keep my collections kind of small, knowing what um, I might need this later. You know, knowing what I might use, pieces of hardware. There's a little metal teapot. I think it was a salt shaker. Um, somebody took this out of a nativity scene. I'm not sure where. But I have things in here that, you know, I collect and hope to be able to use sometime. Um, I was actually looking for something like that this morning. And uh, so I, I keep my, my little collections close by when I'm ready to work on assemblage and um, oftentimes find things. This was a clock I took apart because I really want all these little gears. I just haven't figured out how to get them out of here. So I highly recommend that you have a, a box or a drawer that you keep your stuff in. Let me clear that out of the way because you never know what you're going to need it. Now, let's see, which box are we gonna use? I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on three of them, and they're going to be, um, as pointed out in my last videos, I have a bird box, I have a butterfly, and I have a turtle. So I'm doing a little series of um, nature and animals, and this was the box that um, I, I showed you how I went about covering it and getting everything ready to put my assemblage in it. Now something that um, that I didn't used to think about but I pay attention to now is I wanna make sure that my box is weighted properly. These are pretty lightweight boxes, so I wanna make sure that whatever I'm putting in here is gonna be weighted properly. For instance, this box um, has something going on the top that is going to make it kind of off balance. So I have these really cool little uh, pavers, these little terracotta pavers that are stamped, and I just glued those to the bottom, and they are gonna weigh down this, this very lightweight box. Um, so the glue that I'm using is, I'm using Gorilla Glue. I either use Gorilla Glue or E6000, either one works fine. I'm just clamping these guys because I just glued them and I wanna make sure they stay put while I'm working on this. And uh, so let me show you what my main theme, my main piece is. And you kinda of have to think it through how you're gonna add your pieces. I don't wanna put everything in here if I'm gonna stand it up to add my piece that goes on the top here. So, um, and this is it. This, if you remember, was my inspiration piece for this. So I went ahead and I took my handy dandy drill, put a large drill bit in it, went down through the top of the box. 
which is really nice with these iPad boxes because there is a space back there that allows you to do that. And I made sure that my little guy was gonna fit right in there. So let me put a little glue on him. I'm gonna put glue right around the base of this. And I'm gonna shove him right in there and push it down. So that is what the top of my box is going to be. I think that's, that's just such a great little addition. And I made sure that the color wasn't exactly the same as this. I don't want it to be too matchy-matchy, but I did like the blue added to it. So I've got this guy. A lot of the pieces are going to be on the outside of the box. Let me put that, make sure I have it in view. Um, the pieces that are going to be on the inside is I had another little iron bird. So I painted him to match this guy. And I'm going to put him right in here. Now when you put things on the inside, you've got to make sure that when you put the glass over top of it, that this is going to allow the glass to lay down. I believe it is. Well, I believe it is because first of all, I tried it. Second of all, I... Um, have this little inset here, the little extra inset that pushes things in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to glue this little guy on the bottom and on the tip of his tail, because I think maybe that's gonna sit on there. And I'm gonna put the key on just because I like the key. Um, it doesn't really have part of the story. This story is going to be titled Lovebirds. So let me make sure that you have all the little strings from your glue off, cleaned off, because when you put your glass on top of here, um, there's no turning back. So whatever shows up there you know, whatever's inside is going to be uh, uh, behind glass. And once the glass is glued in place, you're not going to want to remove it. Let me get a little speck right there to make sure it's seated properly. Everything else is going on the outside of this box. But I'm really liking the way this looks. I've got that down. Let me get these guys out of the way. I'm going to lay my glass in here. Um, I'm hesitant to do that right away, uh, but let me first clean your glass. Make sure you clean your glass really well, because again, once you get it in, glued into place, you don't want to have the finished piece have a smudge mark on your glass. And I think what I'm going to do is lay this in, but not glue it in. Um, so I can come back later and and fix anything I need to fix. Um, I'm just going to set it in there so you can get the idea of what the glass is going to do. Because it's going to be a pretty snug fit. I probably will not have to glue this piece in because the fit is going to be so snug. But in an effort to show you this piece, what I'm going to do with it, is I had this little, this little, um, I think it was a part of uh, an old soap. You had, there were two pieces. There were two rounded pieces like this that were clamped together. You put soap in it and swished it around in water, and that's how you made your soap suds. So I took that, and I glued on this little branch with these two little birds with a nest, I put a little bead in there, a little silver, silvery blue bead, and, and I've had this forever. It's an eggshell with resin and two, and two hearts in it wrapped in wire. And I'm gonna put that on the outside of my glass. And then this is going to free hang. So um, the title of this piece is going to be, I think I'm gonna call it Lovebirds, but 
I might come up with something else. The reason I mentioned before I was wanted this little spot of red is because I wanted it to tie in. And to make it have, make sense, I have a little blue bird I might add right on top of that, just for the heck of it. It's a little tricky because the glue, we don't want the glue to show. And I'm doing a really small little rim here. So I'm going to maybe dip the glue, put some glue out on my, my little uh, tray. Yikes. And maybe just dip the glue in the very edge. Now, again, I want to make sure I clean all the strings off. And leave enough glue that I know it's going to adhere and stay stuck. That's always a tricky proposition when you're working with such a thin little edge. Let's give it a try. Right. I want to center it right on. I'm still cleaning off. Can never clean off too much. Okay. One over here. This old guy will hang down. I could either hang him down or I could actually glue him as well. I'll wait and see how well this holds. If this holds really well on its own, I won't glue this down. But if this is going to weight it down and pull it askew, then I will go ahead and glue that. Meanwhile, my little bird, I'm gonna dip him in the glue. Should have no trouble with him sticking right here, right inside that little red spot. And uh, I think this is going to do it. So there is assemblage number one. I wish I could stand it up, but at the end of the video, I'll make sure to add these in as finished pieces. But this is where the b little bird, the bird... Uh, the bird box, um, the bird cage is going to be, and it's going to be lovebirds, or I'll kind of research it, maybe find the title of a song or, or the title of a book that really works with that. And uh, for now, I'm going to push this guy aside. I like that. It's so cute. Okay, next one. Let's do this one. This is the butterflies. And what I did since you saw this... Um, is I went in, because I had blue, the color blue on the bird piece, I went in and I colored this piece with a little bit of orange. This was the spot that I took the three turtles out, out of earlier, you might have remembered, and I found a photo of a butterfly wing. So I added that in. Now, um, let me... Pull my elements over here. I'm not really sure how those are going to go together. I'm going to clean my glass first before I get too carried away with glue over here. And, and I did cut my glass. Um, I'll be happy to show you how to do it at the end of the video. Um, it's pretty simple and I hope that I can have time without making this too long of a video. What are we doing with this? I'm not really completely 100% sure. I've got this little round piece, which I really love, and I believe that is also going to go on top of the glass. Let's see. I've got to cover this up. That is where a turtle was. And I'm thinking... Um, hang on one second. I 
this really great little shell button that will cover that up nicely. And then I have this really nice little um, sterling silver butterfly. Unfortunately, once he goes in the box, he's going to end up getting tarnished. So um, let me put him in. I like that because it has a nice natch, it has the the colors that I'm working with, and it's a, a natural shell stone. And then uh, my little butterfly. Let's hope he just sits right there. Now, I might have to keep my eye on him. Uh, because he's not a smooth surface, he, his little body is rounded. So I want to make sure he doesn't start tilting over to one side. Another reason not to put my glass on yet. Um, I also had these really, really cool little ceramic, I think they were earrings. Because they have holes in them. They may have been earrings, but they have a really nice little natural finish to them that I thought could look really cool right there. So I'm gonna glue these guys in that empty space. Should probably open a door because this gorilla glue is pretty um, pretty potent. All right, I like it. I like the simplicity. Again, I like the simplicity. Now, um, let me drop in my glass. Again, I'm gonna come back and clean this up on the flip side. Okay, so there's that. And then I want to take this. Um, I kinda wanted to crap, cover up that crab because the crab right here doesn't really make sense. Not that he has to, or I could put this on here and let the crab um, let the crab just be there because it is part of nature. And I also have this copper key that the only reason I want to use it is it plays with the colors um, in here. So uh, maybe it can come up with something that is along the lines of uh, the the uh, part that butterflies play in nature, the key they are to nature. I'd have to research that a little bit. I'm not really sure. Just thinking out loud. Again, I'm taking this. It's another little piece that has a really thin edge that I need to glue down and hope that no strings are left. I think I will put my little butterfly right there. Let me see, what's the best way to attach him? Oh, there's, there it is. Like he's got a little groove in here. So I think it's probably enough that I can build up the glue and hopefully I love rusty things. I have a really great little lizard, but he's just a little bit too much shiny. Um, I think I'm gonna put this on the top of the box. Wish I had another butterfly to light on top of that, and maybe that's something to look for. Again, be, if I do I, um, add this, this is a pretty heavy weight, so I may... I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. I have two more of these little tiles. If I do add that to the top, 
I feel like I may have to put those tiles on because this is pretty heavy. But I like the way it looks and maybe I really maybe. like that. I like the simplicity of it. Now, something I might do, depending on how the glass drops in, if I have to put little corners of glue you know, in each of the corners to hold the glass in. Sometimes I will go around with edging, as you saw in a, in a couple of my, um, uh, here we go, my iPad boxes. I have this little metal uh, edging. Uh, if I had, can find more of that, and I think I may have it in my stash somewhere, which would look so perfect on this. I'll use that. Otherwise, I have used washi tape before and it really it really finishes things off nicely. Maybe something to pull in the black from the um, butterfly wings, the butterfly wing in here. Um, it could be something black and white, just like, uh, this looks like, you know, the divider of a, a road. So I'm not sure, but that's how this piece is gonna be finished off. So, um, I look forward to showing that to you. And then the last little piece, which will probably be my favorite because I do love turtles. Turtles. Um, I remember hearing once, um, once upon a time in my, my um, corporate career, I heard one, one weekend I heard somebody say, life is like a turtle. If you don't stick your neck out, you don't make any progress. And um, I was in a corporate job, even though it was creative, it was not, um, didn't make me very happy. So I went in that next uh, Monday and quit my job. With me. Turtles have stuck with me um, ever since then. So I have a collection of turtles. I used to have a real tortoise, even. There we go. Now this one, this is gonna be a nice fit as well. So I'm really lucky about that. Okay, what are we doing with this one? Oh, yikes, let me see. I've got my three turtles. And like the other two boxes, the birds are blue. The butterflies I did in a rusty um, red ochre color. And this one, I went over, and I, and I think I may have showed this to you. This was where the upside down butterfly was, and I added the turtle um, illustration that I love so much. This is a snapping turtle. This is the great mud tortoise, actually, from Pennsylvania. Um, and I was born in Pennsylvania, so there's a connection there. So this one is going to be titled slow down you move too fast so what i want to do is what do you want to do denise i have this little guy that i took out of one of the other boxes i like him um he could be perfect in here but i want the feeling of time so i think what i might do is if i can make this work this is a short one. This is a long one. I'm gonna make this be turtles and clocks. How am I gonna do that? I've got the two hands there. Oops. And I've got an upholstery tack. Let's see if I can create a hole with the upholstery tack. Ooh, that works fine. Not that these pieces have to move, but, um, oh, I like that, okay. But I gotta glue it down a little bit. And I gotta glue this guy down. So he's going in for sure. And we're gonna put him right in the middle. All right, got him. Now I'm pretty sure that this tack will allow me to lay the glass down. So let's put, that's gonna face down. And then I can take my, my tack, and what I do is I just stick it in the tube of glue. 
find my the hole I created. There it is. This box. I do have one thing. I loved this watt, this clock, and I thought how perfect to put this with slow down. But there's a lot of cool stuff back here that I want to disassemble. I just haven't found a little screwdriver small enough to do it. I need a jeweler's screwdriver. So what I did is I took that out of its casing and I came up with this. This is a really old clock face that is faded. You can hardly see it. I put a couple gears. I had some little extra arrows laying around and a drawer pull. So I made my own little clock that is going to go on the outside. So I got that going. Now, what else do I need inside? I could place some little gears around. Um, that could be kind of fun. I do like gears. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? I have another little clock that's in the right color. Maybe just adding these in right down here would be nice. Because the other, this guy, the other clock is going to sit right there. I think that's what I do. And these little gears have a pin in them. So I can take them. Let's see. I, I, this is, it's really tricky to show how to do all of this. Um, because there's so many little small intricate parts that you have to figure out as you're going. And that goes in. Oh, I might even be able to leave that a little dimensional, which I like. Um, this little clock. Whoops. And yes, I have glue all over my fingers. Here. I'm hoping I'm working on this in in uh, frame. This is gonna go there. There you go. Pulled out this little frame too. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with him, but anyway. So that is the parts that I want inside, and then. This guy is very jerry-rigged on the bottom to get all of this to work together. And I think I want him to go right here. I think that looks good. I may even throw another gear on the outside if I can find a gear that I like. This is a little too shiny um, and new looking. I know I have a, another box of old gears but I want it to be all around time um you know slow down you move too fast turtles are known for being slow of course but they always seem to make their mark I could put this up there oh I know I have a bigger one that would be perfect Oh yeah, I'm gonna put this up there. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do it. I think I'll probably have to drill another hole in this box and set that up. But yeah, that is, um, that's gonna work nicely. I also thought if I need to add trim around this box, um, I have some washi tape that has clocks and I could easily add that around this box and it would be kind of fun and add another element to it. So we'll have to see how that is going to lay out. Um, but for right now, let, let me scoot everything out of the way. There's my turtles. Here is my soon to be butterflies. Wish I had two more of those um, uh, tiles. That would be great. My butterflies are going to be something like this. 
and my little bird. There you go. There's all three of them. I am really, really happy with how they're turning it out and how they go together. Um, I can't wait to finish these off. I'm going to stop the video and finish them off and so I can come back and show them to you finished. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to them. And I hope that um, you're excited about trying to do some assemblage. It's so fun. It's You can go crazy. You can end up building things um, with them. You can get really carried away. I know this because I've done it many times. But these are just really nice, fun little assemblage pieces. And um, I hope you give it a try. As always, I hope you give it a try. And I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up and um, follow me if you're not following me because I will show up every now and again and, and put my, my latest creative endeavors on my YouTube channel. I'd love to have you. Love it when you leave your comments and uh, to see what you think. And what else? Anything else I forgot? I may have forgot, but it'll be in the description. These pieces will go onto my website with my other assemblage pieces. That will be linked in the description. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Bye-bye. And I almost forgot that I promised to show you how to cut glass. So um, these are the, the pieces that I made from greeting card boxes. And originally, we just covered them in the class with just the film, the little uh, mylar plastic film that went over the top. So I took those off. And I'm actually going to cut some glass to go on these. So um, let me show, show you how easy that is to cut. Now, of course, when I go to show somebody how to do it, it doesn't work quite as nicely as I'd like. So that's my disclaimer, just in case it doesn't work out. And I've measured these with the boxes, which aren't completely straight. And this, this is a, a glass cutter, pretty simple. You get them for you know under ten bucks at at um, hardware craft stores. Um, so let me just show you how easy this is to do. Now I'm using a thick ruler as my guide, and I'm gonna just one cut is all it should take, and then you turn it away from you, and there you go. That, that piece broke off. Let's hope this one goes as easy. Flip it away from you. Ooh, that one. There you go. And that guy, once I clean off the, the ink, is going to fit right over on this side of the box. I'll clean it up. I may put another little lip in here to get it to stick properly, but um, that's all it takes. This one, I'm just going to cover the, the piece on the bottom with glass. And I save all my little scraps of glass or pieces that I take out of picture frames. One's going to go right there. I've already cut one for here. And this little last one. I'm only going to cover the bottom portion of it. I'm hearing some crunching going on. I don't like the sound of that. But it still broke just as I needed it and that will go right there so um that's how easy cutting glass can be now I do suggest you make sure you're doing it on a hard surface um I've done it on my work table before where I've had a, a towel laid out and then something put over it and just that little bit of cushion uh made it work not work almost every time but I wanted to give you that last little, little thing since I promised I'd show you how to do it. You just need 
a good glass cutter. This one actually comes with oil that I put in it. Um, although I have another one that's just, you know, just a simple glass cutter. And, um, you know, glass, you can pick up the hardware store, just sheets of glass, or like I say, pull them out of picture frames or other things you have around the house uh, that you can pull the glass out of. It works great. So now I'll clean these up, create some little lips to set them down on, and I am done with that project. So um, I hope you've enjoyed all this, and I hope you can use some of these tips. Um, yeah, there you go. Enjoy. Enjoy.